Hi there everyone, no prizes for guessing what today's object is. It's this four foot telescope in front of me. It's amazing, gorgeous looking. And to tell us the story, we have another gorgeous looking thing. Keith Moore, head librarian at the Royal Society. What have you got for us here? Ah, so this is a really fabulous 18th century instrument. It's by John Bird. And we know that, of course, because it's engraved on the side of the instrument, along with its Royal Society instrument number. 78, there we go, John Bird. We've got the man himself here, John Bird, a picture of him. So there he is, sitting, looking very prosperous and contented. He was a bit of a big deal at the time, wasn't he? That's right, yeah. So he becomes a, a kind of major London-based instrument maker. He's actually born in the northeast of England. But he comes down, sets up business and begins to make these very accurate and rather lovely instruments. Initially, things like quadrants, the, the kind of non-obviously telescope things that you would use in astronomy. And he manages to uh, impress James Bradley, the, the astronomer and FRS. He gets some instruments to him. Bradley thinks they're great and uh, makes observations with them and that begins to build his reputation. Now you said he was from the northeast of England. Does that mean we're going to get a bit more about how wonderful he was and how great the northeast of yeah, England is? Yeah, yeah. Well, that's you yeah. know, I, I just have to have to keep saying it, Brady. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Anyone who's from the northeast gets a very special place in objectivity because yeah. Keith's a bit biased. But <laughs> and what have we got here? We've got these are Bradley's observations. That's right. So this is the kind of raw data that Bradley would have put together based upon the astronomical instruments he had, and it's in exactly the right period. This so this runs to seventeen. 50 and beyond so this is where you begin to get the possibility that some of these observations were used using uh, John Bird's instruments. So we don't know for sure but some of this could be directly because of a telescope, this very telescope maybe. Yeah probably uh, as we'll see in a moment a quadrant but with an eyepiece attached to it. And he says a, a transit here, so he's using a new transit instrument because this is 1750. This new transit instrument may very well be the one made by John Bird. And you, I know you're going to want to have a look through it, so yeah. yeah. I can see <laughs> the blurry ceiling of the room we're in at the moment. Wow. It makes you feel that little bit closer to these famous people when you get to look through their instruments. It's great. So the site has got a much wider field of view, as you'd expect, to zone in on the stars or objects you want. And then you go for the close-up look here. I mean, it looks like it was made yesterday, Keith. It's beautiful, isn't it? Nice and shiny and lacquered. Sometimes you can get flaws in the lacquering and, and the uh, brass starts to begin to tarnish there. This looks like it's in, in pretty good condition to me. You can see the odd dent there. It's probably been out and about, loaned by the Royal Society for observations. But on the whole, it's in, in pretty good order by the look of it. And we've got one last thing here of interest. What's this document here, Keith? The Royal Society started accumulating uh, scientific objects really from its inception uh, but it never kept terribly good track of them you have to say uh, and of course they were lent out came back again they lost track of uh, what some things were, were even made for so uh, in the 18, 20, late 1820s and early 1830s they began to try and get a handle on this and, and make a list of instruments which was published in the 1830s but we can see here the, the kind of attempts to, to, to uh, get a handle on what the Royal Society had uh, in, its, in its various storehouses. Okay, so this is just lists of amazing treasures the Royal Society That's has had. right. Sometimes still has. Yeah, so there are various kind of attempts at this, some of them quite messy, some of them pretty good. And you can see in this quite finished version, we've got the numbers on them, which is great. This is 78, isn't it? This is 78, yeah, so let's have a... A look and just see 72. 72. Turn the page. 78. Electromagnetic apparatus by. This must be a different numbering. Yeah, so they've, they've renumbered it, which is oh. kind of even funnier. Oh. So uh, here we go. This is the bane of your existence, isn't it? I know, it? yeah. So this is one of the early attempts. This is quite a neat list of instruments, and you can see it's from March 1827. And you can see. Quite a lot of interesting things here. We have a 12 inch quadrant by Bird, so the same maker, and lots of things that we've featured on objectivity, but lots of things that weren't. I'd love to see Lynn's wind gauge. Oh. That'd be good, wouldn't it? You haven't got that anymore. I haven't got that anymore, I'm afraid. Yeah. It's so tantalizing seeing yeah. all this stuff the society used to have. Ah, here we go. 
So it says a telescope by bird, apparently belonging to some quadrant, about four foot long. Well, this telescope is about four foot long. Yeah, it's almost exactly four feet long, actually. Yeah. You have to wonder if it was originally on the side of a quadrant and then they've, they've remounted it so it can be used as, a, as an independent instrument. And they certainly had a bird quadrant at that point. So there's a good chance that that's a reference to this telescope when it had a different mounting. And yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's quite possible. But uh, you should have a look at uh, what else is there and, and pick your favourite, I think, Brady. What's the objectivity video that you would love to have made? And oh, we just don't have the instrument anymore. Keith, I would go for two ancient microscopes in vellum tubes. They have to be pretty early ones, so they, they, it's not a kind of what you would expect, a kind of solid brass tube or anything yeah. like that. It's just a, a piece of animal skin probably wrapped around a cardboard interior, <laughs> something like that, with lenses in it. Yeah. Um, and... Uh, um, probably very early, but who, whose were they? Uh, and they're not here, they're not Rob here anymore. Culpepper's, Robert Hooke's, uh, no, no, we don't have them. But we do have Newton's Reflecting Telescope. Newton's Reflecting Telescope, there it is in the list. That you have kept. Yeah. They didn't lose that. And you didn't lose this one. Little dent, but otherwise glorious. Yes. You can see here the stereos starting to come. A lot of these are just oh, wow. landscape views, but if you look at them through a 3D viewer, a stereo viewer, you'll get that three-dimensional effect on these photographs. This is like the original 3D photography. Mm, that's right, yeah. But this seems like also the original photography, so I'm a bit surprised that they went right for stereoscopic photography. Yeah, this is 1856. Yeah. So it's not too far away from the beginnings of photography. It's still pretty pioneering stuff, mm -hmm. yeah.